Her second kid, Franklin del Silva Samboli Padilla, died as a result of a stroke while she was expecting her first. When the embryo's hearts continued to beat, surgeons were able to save them even though they were nine weeks old at the time. The nurses and doctors at the hospital sang and talked to her growing belly in an attempt to imitate the love of a mother. Following the death of their mother, doctors informed the family that the babies had no chance of survival. Even though they were born prematurely, Anna Victoria, 1.4 kilograms, and Asaf, 1.3 kilograms, were both healthy and survived their early births. Miracles can be experienced in our ordinary lives every now and then, and they can be witnessed everywhere. Similar circumstances occurred in Brazil when a brain-dead woman was kept alive on life support for 123 days in order to let the infants growing inside her womb to see the light for the first time. In the history of medical science, there has never been a case when a brain-dead patient has been kept alive for such a long period of time as this. When Franklin de Silva Zampoli's Padija from Campo Largo in the state of Sao Paulo suffered a cerebral hemorrhage in October of last year, doctors declared her dead. She was only 22 years old at the time of the tragedy. When the doctors discovered that the babies in her womb were healthy and thriving, they were taken aback. The doctors at the Nasa San Jorge del Rocio Hospital made the decision to perform the unspeakable in order to save the lives of their patients. To assure the survival of their offspring, they planned to keep the mother alive as long as possible. It was their method of paying for the loss of their mother's affection for the children. They decorated the environment around the woman and sung songs to the unborn offspring as a form of compensation. The births of the babies had been heralded as a miracle, especially as everyone had given up hope before to their arrival. Prior to performing an emergency cesarean surgery to deliver twins, doctors were able to maintain a brain-dead pregnant woman alive for 123 days, which was the longest stretch of time ever recorded in the history of medicine. She was 21 years old and from Campo Largo in southern Brazil when she died in October of last year after suffering a stroke while she was expecting her first child. She was 21 years old at the time. Because their hearts were still beating within their mother's wombs, physicians decided to remove the embryos from their mother's wombs at nine weeks of pregnancy. Employees at the Naso San Joro de Rocio Hospital decorated the space around Miss Padija's bed with photographs of her, singing to her unborn children and talked to growing infants in an attempt to replace their mother's affection for the children with that of the children. The children were born alive, according to their father, despite physicians' predictions that they had little chance of surviving their condition. They were hanging on to life by the skin of their teeth. Miss Padija died in October of last year, nine weeks into her pregnancy, as a result of a cerebral hemorrhage that occurred during her labor. She was 29 years old at the time. February of this year, her ventilator was switched off for the last time. Initially, doctors had told the twins' father, Muriel Bendiha, 24, that they had no chance of surviving, and he was described her birth as a miracle because of their survival. He performed an ultrasound on the embryos, assuming they would be failing in the womb, but to her amazement, they were still alive, says Miss Dalton Ravabem, director of the hospital's neurological urgent care unit. Because all of Franklin's organs were in great working condition, it appeared as though she was still alive and well. We made the decision to keep her alive in order to save the lives of her unborn children, and were able to watch them grow and develop on a regular basis, on a daily basis. A physician in Portugal was contacted by Dr. Rivabem, who has previously dealt with a similar circumstance in which a fetus has gestated for 107 days before being born. Physician provided aid. Previously, there have been a longer example, but ours is the longest at 123 days, or four months. We started with embryos when we were two months pregnant and ended up with twins. One of our primary goals was to keep organ function intact so that the children may grow and develop normally. A cerebral hemorrhage is a type of hemorrhage that occurs in the brain. In the event that a diseased blood vessel in the brain ruptures and permits blood to flow into the organ, a cerebral hemorrhage may occur. If not treated promptly, it can result in a rapid buildup of pressure, which can be fatal if not addressed immediately. In total, they account for around 15 to 20% of all strokes. 
One or more of the following symptoms may occur. A severe headache that appears out of nowhere, tingling, weakness, or facial paralysis, limited vision, loss of balance, difficulty speaking, and impaired attentiveness. Surgery or pressure-relieving medications may be employed in the treatment of this condition. Frankie Lynn has appeared in front of me on a number of occasions, the author claims. In comparison to her brother, Asaf, Anna Victoria was born weighing 1.4 kilograms while her brother was born weighing 1.3 kilograms. There was no difference in their health between them and premature neonates of the same age were born prematurely. The infants, who were kept in incubators for three months while Mr. Badija is at work, are cared for by Franklin's mom, Angela Silva, while she is at work. Frankie Lynn's mother's name is Angela Silva. In addition, Miss Silva expressed her satisfaction with her daughter even though it has been difficult. She was a warrior right up until the end, protecting her beautiful children and giving them life until the day she was taken from us. Mr. Padilha, who had been married to his wife for six years, stated in his statement that Franklin had appeared to him on multiple occasions, particularly when I was despondent and asking with God to bring her back into my life. In the middle of the night, she took a perch on the edge of my bed and declared, I'm sorry, sweetheart, but I'm unable to return to you at this time. I'm under an obligation to stay. I've moved into a fantastic area. You still have a tremendous amount of work ahead of you, however. We expect you to be tough and carry on with your life while caring for our children. It's a shame. Franklin, who passed away recently, was a generous and compassionate person. The miracle, I believe, was orchestrated by God for her to be the vessel through which it occurred. There was a lot of affection in the intensive care unit. A remarkable pattern of singing, talking, and touching Franklin's increasing belly was established on the ward by physicians, nurses, nutritionists, physical therapists, and a slew of other health professionals who stroked and kissed Franklin's developing tummy. The chaplain and music therapist Erica Chacon described how she and her colleagues identified children's songs and sung them to the newborns while they were still in the womb. They were in the inspiration for special music that we wrote just for them. We also decorated the area around Franklin's bed. The group explained it was possible not to feel love, affection, and support for the infants and their families as they worked toward a successful outcome in the intensive care unit. We love you, we told them on a daily basis when they were at our house. Great collaboration and, of course, the divine purpose played a significant role in the conclusion of this case, Dr. Rivbone added in addition. When the babies were born, we admitted that everyone, including himself, sobbed in aggravation at their arrival. As a result of the family's plight, well-wishers from all across Brazil came together to raise thousands of pounds in support, with many individuals bringing baby clothes and diapers to the family in need. Agriculturalist Mr. Badija will put some of the funds towards renovating the family home, which is currently in need of repair. I don't intend to go back home, says the author. I was on my way to work in October when Franklin called and pleaded with me to come back home quickly. Mr. Badija, who is the father of a two-year-old daughter named Isla Beatrice, with his deceased wife, relocated. The woman complained that her brain was killing her. I told her that she needed to take medicine, and she agreed. According to the police report, she was suffering from excruciating pain in the back of her neck that was so acute she felt her neck would give way. Mr. Bidiecha returned home, and he discovered his wife shaking, sobbing, disorientated, and vomiting as a result of the misery he had led her to go through. He was driving her to the hospital when she said to him, I want you to be prepared for this because I will be staying there and I will not be returning home. She continued, I want you to be prepared for this. This was the last time I saw her alive and those were the last words she said to me before she passed away on the following day. Miss Bidiha had her a cerebral hemorrhage, according to the doctors who treated her. A large amount of brain bleeding had occurred and she was taken to the hospital for treatment. After three days of testing and scans, doctors determined she was brain dead. They informed Mr. Padija that there was no hope for the kid's survival. After many CT scans, powerful medications, and antibiotics, the doctors told him that the babies only had three more days to live because they had given my wife so many CT scans, anesthetized her with powerful medications, and pumped her full of antibiotics. Everything had ended up in our babies, he explained. Following the cessation of the little heart's beating, they claimed that they would turn off the gadgets and that they would be able to lay my wife to rest. 
Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.